So let me use the time to go over really part A of this question because um, uh, it's a trick question. But it's, uh, um, uh, let me start out with the answer because um, it's kind of the nature of the trick question, which is where if you know the answer, it's easier. Um, the answer here, the uh, acceleration of the block, it's actually A is equal to zero. And um, I specifically set up this question that way. You might uh, notice a few suspicious things. Because especially on exam questions, I don't like to give numbers. So the things that are suspicious are, I'm giving you a specific angle, and I'm giving you a specific friction coefficient. And those are all necessary components to set up this uh, trick. So, uh, but you know, you didn't actually have to know that this is trick question. So let me pretend that I don't know the trick and kind of just uh, work through this, uh, um, uh, this question, part A at least. I think part A covers everything I want, want to say about friction force. So I'll start out with a free body diagram. Uh, you've seen me draw through free body diagrams many times, so I'll kind of draw this one quickly without a lot of commentary. I have gravity pulling it down, mg. I have no more force, which is going to be perpendicular to the surface. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, there's friction, so it, without friction, it tends to slide down this way. So the friction force will have to oppose that, so I'll have some friction force going that way. All right, step number one. Step number two, I need to define my axis. That's going to be my x and y. And I need to, uh, de that's step number two. Step number three, I need to decompose my uh, forces into uh, uh, components along x and y. So x and y. So um, here you have to be kind of careful with the angles. So let me um, illustrate the angles that you are dealing with. So this is kind of, the, the dotted line is the representation of the surface. So if you have this theta here, then this is 90 degrees. So this is actually going to be theta. So um, in terms of labeling the components, the horizontal component, wait, 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 wait sorry, no. Did it too quickly. Uh, <laughs> that's not gonna be theta because this is the right triangle here. So the angle I have there is not theta, but it's actually 90 degrees minus theta. So this is going to be theta. So uh, which will give me this uh, side here, which is opposite from where the theta angle is. Um, that's going to be given by mg sine theta. So and this side is going to be given by mg cosine theta. I'm hoping you have seen this enough times that you don't fall into that trap of uh, thinking, oh, x cosine y sine. Draw the triangle, always start from there. All right, so that's a step number three. Step number four, write down Newton's second law equations. So I need two of them, one for each direction. So I have net force along the x direction. That's going to be um, the x component of gravity, mg sine theta, minus the friction force is gonna equal mass times acceleration. And you need a net force along the y direction. That's gonna be n minus mg cosine theta. And this one from the start I know will be zero. And as usual, uh, before you call it done, you count your uh, unknowns and equations. I have one, two equations, and I have friction that's unknown. I have acceleration that's unknown. I have normal force that's unknown. And, um, and I think a lot of people will get as far as this, saying that, oh, oh, then I need a third equation, and I'm going to get my third equation from friction, and that's going to say my friction force is the friction coefficient times the normal force. And that's the trap that uh, I mean for a lot of people to fall into. And uh, let me show you how you can spot that trap without someone like me telling you that it's a trap. And 
really, the way you spot it is through something that we call sanity check. Whenever you get an answer, you want to make sure that your answer makes sense. So uh, let me go through this. Uh, uh, so yeah, I'll go through this. So um, let me pretend that I think that this will lead to correct answer. And so what I'm going to do is I have three unknowns. And I'm going to just systematically uh, work through them, eliminating them. So, um, so I want to be able to plug in my friction force there. So that means I need to eliminate normal force here through my equation two. So let me do that quickly on the side here. My normal force is equal to mg cosine theta plug that into equation, plug that into equation three, I get friction forces mu mg cosine theta. I plug that into equation one, then I end up with mg sine theta minus mu mg cosine theta is equal to ma. And you know, frankly, you could leave this here um, or uh, close to here, you know, solve it for acceleration, say that a is equal to, see that all the masses cancel out and say a is equal to g sine theta minus mu g cosine theta. But if you left it here, um, you will have fallen into my trap. <laughs> this is why, um, even though a lot of circumstances, this would, could be an acceptable answer. This is frankly uh, why I keep uh, encouraging you to simplify your algebraic expression. Because simplifying your algebraic expression will give you some insight um, into the solution. So let me simplify this algebraic expression. I think I can actually do that with the values that I'm given. Um, I'm given the value of mu, that's one, and I'm given the value of theta, 30 degrees, uh, which means I actually know the values of sine and cosine. Uh, I remember enough of my trick to know sine 30 degrees is one half, and cosine of 30 degrees is root three over two. So uh, this is going to be equal to, uh, I can factor out g times 1 half minus mu is 1, root 3 over 2. And this is where I hope you realize that this answer here gives you a negative number. And this is what we mean by sanity check. Does this answer make sense? Usually a negative answer means that the direction of a vector quantity is in the opposite direction to what you're assuming. Here we thought the, the block would slide down the hill, but I guess what it means, wait, sliding up the hill, it, that's, it, that, nothing's pushing it up. It's not going to happen that way. So this is what I, what I mean by sanity check. As you're doing the sanity check, you should realize that your acceleration um, it cannot be negative because the block is just not going to slide up. So, uh, so this means this is a high. Uh, this is this is notifying you to the fact that uh, there was a mistake made. So you need to go back and figure out what the mistake is. And the mistake that is made is this: assuming that the friction force is simply mu times n. And if you read through the friction force chapter carefully, uh, what you should have seen is that the, okay, kinetic friction force is that way. It is really the coefficient times n. There's no other complication there. But the static friction force is more complicated. There is no simple formula that tells you what the static friction force is. Uh, there's an expression that tells you what the maximum value for static friction force can be. And uh, for that, you say it's uh, less than or equal to mu s times n. But you really have to be careful with this inequality here. It, 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 this does not it tells you what the maximum possible 
value of friction force is. It doesn't tell you what the actual value of friction force is. So here, um, once you realize that, then uh, you actually go back. You realize, oh, I cannot use this. Um, then you get, oh, oh, oh. So what I really need to fix here is that I wrote this down thinking that I don't know my acceleration and that would have been the case for kinetic friction but for static friction, I know it's not sliding. So acceleration here must be zero. And that's how you arrive at this sensor here, that your acceleration is zero. Um, and let's see. Oh, and it's asking for the friction force. And uh, what I can tell you is that this equation here, it's still valid. So you can actually, knowing that acceleration is zero, you can actually solve this for friction force to get this expression for friction force. The friction force is equal to mg sine theta. That is just enough to uh, counteract the, the x component of the gravitational force. So yeah, so I really want you to go over that. That's why I went over time to do that. And then the rest of the question is more kind of uh, standard, typical 